In this video, we're going to take you from the unboxing to the setup of a standalone Ubiquiti wireless access point. If you are like me and you've never worked with the Ubiquiti ecosystem, then stick around so you can learn the ins and outs of setting up that access point. Welcome to the channel where we learn to tech and use tech to learn. We'll have this video sliced up down below. That way you can jump around wherever you feel like you need to learn the best. And of course, we'll have all of the products linked below so you know exactly what we were working with. Now, before we get into the setup of this access point, it's important to understand the scope of work. What equipment did we need to purchase in order to accomplish our goal? Now, the goal is to extend the Wi-Fi into an industrial yard on a commercial lot for wireless security cameras. That's a whole different video. We have to cover about 100 feet at maximum range as we attach the AP to the exterior of the building. Now this video will cover the initial configuration of the devices in my home office before they get deployed on site. So we've got the AC mesh, we have a switch light 8 POE, and a few patch cables. We'll lay out all the equipment and check out each unit. Stay tuned. all right we have our switch powered on it is also connected to the network we have activity we can confirm this by checking in on our google wi-fi app it shows that that device has an active internet connection so let's go ahead and get our access point plugged in this is sped up just to show you the boot process once that light goes solid we can download the unify app which is available on google play and the apple app store now that we have it downloaded it looks like we'll have to sign in with the account we use to order the equipment now here is where it gets fun because the setup is quite easy it immediately found the access point it also found the switch that is on the network it asks me to allow some bluetooth slash wireless connection so we can see all the devices and now i get to set up the device by simply tapping to set up it's quite easy and as i repeat myself we are 
doing this as a standalone app, so it does give you several warnings prior to actually connecting to the AP. Specifically, three different warnings telling you that you are going to lose a, a set of features that will not be available without the Unify console. Once we've confirmed yet again that we would like to proceed with a standalone AP, it finally asks us to name the access point, and this will just label that access point in our Unify app so we know how to differentiate them between other access points if you chose to do that. Next, quite simply, put in that SSID and that Wi-Fi password. And although this setup is simple, it is actually setting up both a WPA2 and a WPA3 encryption, which is quite fancy. In addition, it's also sort of meshing together a 2.4 gigahertz band and a 5.0 gigahertz band, all of which can be configured later on when the device is set up properly. Finally, we are going to put in a recovery password. This just means that although I can't remotely connect to it, I should be able to access this device from the Unify app from any phone that is connected to the network that has the Unify app installed. But the big issue that I came across is that it would not finish. It would not finish at all. I could not press the button. So I started to reboot the AP to see if that would help. I waited all night for it to maybe update. I tried manually capturing the QR code to see if I could add the AP again. And I was so frustrated that I started to write a support ticket explaining what I was doing. But then I had a thought. And that thought was quite interesting. And that thought was, should I download the Unify app on my iPhone 12 that I use for filming? Let's try this setup again. Put in the Wi-Fi, put in the name of the access point, put in the recovery password, send the recovery password to my email from the iPhone so I don't forget it, and click finish, and by golly, it worked without a problem. Wait a second, the Android device that I was using this entire time was the actual problem? Not the access point? Not the switch? This is very frustrating, and I am very disappointed in the Android app, but it doesn't matter. We have the iPhone as a backup. We are exploring the settings. We are pushing out different configuration changes, like turning off the status light and turning it back on. It was on an older firmware. It was on 6.2, so we will update it to 6.6. .6. And although this is sped up, it did not take very long to do any of these configuration changes. Maybe a few minutes here or there. You can see the access point is blinking. And once it turns blue, it is ready to go. Uh, again, quite simple to set up. But I do wanna run some speed tests on the access point itself. So we're gonna go ahead and download Wi-Fi Man, which is a Ubiquity app available on all app stores. I'm gonna ensure that I'm connected to the right Wi-Fi. I was actually connected to my home Wi-Fi. So I changed over to the access point that we want to test. We're gonna go ahead and do that and see what kind of numbers we achieve. For reference, my house gets 500, 500, and the numbers we are getting are about 270 over 400, which is very impressive because I'm about to switch over to the other Wi-Fi access point, which is a Gen 1 Google Wi-Fi puck to show you the difference 
in download speeds. Once it has determined that we are on the right network, we're gonna show you what happens to our wireless connection on an older piece of technology. It basically cut the download speed in half, but it kept the same upload speed, which is super curious. And I'm just thinking that the uh, Google Wi-Fi has some sort of, I don't know, protocol blocker in there that's not allowing it to properly test and that's okay. The point is, is that our AC mesh device is working properly and we're pretty excited about it. And just to prove the point, we ran the test again on the Google Wi-Fi Gen 1 puck just to confirm the speeds. Like any good technician and quote unquote network engineer, I'm not really an engineer, I just try things. Let's go ahead and test the speed one more time on the AC mesh to ensure that we are getting the best connection we can get in this environment. Once again, super impressed with the AC mesh from Ubiquiti. Uh, I believe our client is going to be very satisfied with this install once we get it on site and connecting to his wireless camera system. As I state again, once we got past the Android app nonsense, it was super easy to set up the access points. So if this is your first time setting it up, just make sure that the app is working properly. Trust me, I uninstalled and reinstalled the Android app and did a lot of different things to make sure it was okay hopefully you will be able to learn something from this video to help you set up more standalone devices i am not sure what was happening with that android app but i am happy that i thought about trying my iphone 12 before submitting a ticket we'll see you next time on the channel don't forget to learn to tech and use tech to learn see you nerds